what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon, so a massive shout out of appreciation to Abraham Mohammed, Adam, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Blue Ridge Ranger, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, Dave Rakia Gafford, David Robinson, David Wayne Foster, Daz Studio 68, Erwin Johnson, er, uh, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennison's, get it right, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life Is Short, Maria Neelands, Matt, Missouri Bear, Nagara, Nathan Thompson, Nye by Rob H, Skeptic936, Steve ALM, Texas Mike, The Real Gabster, Tina Baker, Tom Hawkins, Unbelievable Productions, and Windrider. So a massive shout out of thanks to all of you who do support me on Patreon. Now we are joined hopefully by a couple of people in both Discord and G Plus panels, so I'll raise the mic on them and you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. I don't like drama either. <laughs> yeah, it's my bother. Okay, so I'm I'm recording just so you're aware. Okay. Good morning, United Kingdom. <laughs> so yesterday's live show reached less people than even the very first debate when no one knew about it. Really. Typically, the show gets, uh, after after about three days, the show will hover around, let's say, 1,700, 1,800 to 2,000, 2,300. That's, that's where the, the, the live shows typically end up. Yesterday's show got less than 800 views. Now, any oh, wow. trending, anything trending to give you an insight as to why, or did it just change drastically? I don't know. I could only speculate, and I have all morning, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it on the show. Okay, no drama. <laughs> well, it's not that. I'm just no speculation. I don't know. That's the answer. That's the honest answer. Yes, I could yeah, speculate all day long about why I feel I'm being persecuted in this particular regard. You know, and I've, I, I, you know, I've known this was the case. I've watched the statistics. I say it often. I'm, I've got my ear to the ground about what's going on, on my own channel. I'm, it's my job, right? Yes, we see your tests, righteous. Yeah, I don't see you guys' posts. I'll just pop it in again. Oh, I see you typing. I see it now. Thanks. No worries. No, it's good. good no, stuff. I see what you're saying. I, I know you keep close uh, eye on your statistics and all that, so I thought maybe you were seeing a trend, but you haven't. You can't even relate it to that. I've done something to counteract it. It's just it's driving me nuts. Well, not driving me nuts. It's just a lot of hard work. So obviously, if I see a massive drop in my statistics, I'm going to react to that and try and bolster those statistics by doing more work. So that's precisely what I've done. I've done a shitload of work. and But it's been like that for a little while now, and I'm starting to get knackered. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's only so long I can chunk, chunk out these videos and, and nicely edit them and put out three or four a day. You know, eventually I'm just going to get worn out. I can't do that indefinitely. But in the meantime, I've, you know, I've managed to maintain the channel statistics overall by, by working harder. But you're like, my God, if... if if something else happens, God only knows what, you know, I'm not reaching my subscribers or a wider audience at the moment. <laughs> How much worse could it get? You know what I mean? Short of them actually getting rid of the channel entirely. And at the moment, as far as I can ascertain, I'm not breaking any rules that would leave me with no channel. So <laughs> in terms yeah. of actually, actually, you know, generating what the channel's supposed to generate, which is, which is views, right? That's what a YouTube channel is. But there we go. Well, let, let me give you a, a a possible situation that might answer it. it. It has nothing to do with your channel, but it does have to do with what's happening. So I go visit my friend yesterday in the evening time, which I normally don't, but I did. And 
I decided to go to the supermarket uh, to to get a few more things uh, for Easter and so forth. So I go there, and it's parking lots just about empty. I mean, literally maybe two, three cars, huge supermarket. And I said, are they closed? And so I, it's just before 8 p.m. my time, five minutes till. And then I go, I go, are you open? And the gal there says, five minutes. I said, okay. So I, I shared that because I wasn't aware, since I don't go out at nights from my property, uh, that supermarkets are now closing at 8 p.m. Yeah, voluntarily. Normally, Same here. So, but they're doing it at the moment. They're doing it of their own volition. Yeah. So habits and times and business as usual has all changed on many factor, I mean, arenas, you know, different things. So perhaps people who are now at home or not working are also changing their habits. So maybe they're watching more variety of things on YouTube to where it isn't just, and, and you know, piquing their interest to check other subjects and stuff. So <laughs> oh, no, no, no. it could be something like that. No, no. As soon as the live show finished yesterday, it disappeared from the subscriptions feed. It didn't appear. Oh, it disappeared? Yeah. I've got, I've got oh, four channels Oh, I didn't know you were on. referencing that. I thought you were referencing something else. No, no, no. So I can I check it. Hey, hey Nathan. Hello. Nathan, you're, you're, when you go live, you, you usually, YouTube would send out like a ping to everybody, right? Like all oh, saying you're streaming live? Yeah. Well, they did for a couple of days. It does. And I thought all was well. So to, yeah, because I haven't got one from you still. Yeah. It was just a, it, there was an impression left because it was a fact. You could see that they were appearing, my videos, the live shows that I did, were appearing in the subscriptions feeds. And then people came on the show and told me they got notifications. So, okay, all is well. So I reverted back to my original schedule, which is what I'm on now. And it's just gone back to how it was before I tried to address the problem by flipping the premiering stream with the live show, i.e. going live on the second channel. But as soon as I thought, well, this problem didn't resolve, I just reverted immediately back because even, even that was having its detrimental effect just on the second channel. In other words, my second channel, which is also, you know, a lot of hard work and I put a lot of effort into, it's just be it became the sacrificial lamb. It's like, okay, well, if I'm going to take a hit in views, then that's that's the channel that will take the hit. And I'll put the bigger, longer show onto the main channel and just brush it up a bit and have more conversation at the beginning part, you know, in enthuse the people before we start recording a little bit, which kind of defeats the purpose of the pre-show. It's all about the sound check and, you know, it's, it, it is boring. It's just what happens before a live show. But instead, you know... You, dress it up a bit and make it a bit more interesting for an audience to the point where I can actually chunk out some or had done chunked out some of the pre-show because the conversation was that good but like I say that's all more effort to put onto the main channel so that the live show on the second channel can die on its ass which is all that was happening until people told me got they were getting notifications but in reality I think that was just a I don't know a temporary thing I don't know because now we're just back to how it was before You know, it maybe just uh, it's because they're pushing this uh, news on the on the COVID, right? And that just may be messing with the algorithms for everybody else as a side effect. <laughs> so it may not be specifically targeting people, just that they want to push. Uh, yeah, but stuff. how should that affect? Hold on, I've got an answer to that too. Hold on, no, that's not the case either. So again, not necessarily statistically ear to the ground, but in terms of the YouTubers that are out there talking about how YouTube is doing and what you should be doing as a YouTuber given the current climate on YouTube, those are also channels that I pay close attention to. They're also the same channels that give you hints and tips on how to be a good YouTuber. And those people are saying one clear, square message to all of their listeners. People are watching a lot of YouTube at the moment. There's not enough videos to go make more because everyone's doing really well. Why? Well, obviously, oh. why? There's a complete massive audience all sat at home watching YouTube. So it should be a time of prosperity for all on you. Well, no, not for me. I'm down about 50% now. It's just like, what? I've got to produce four times as many videos. <laughs> what? <laughs> just to keep my head above water. I'm laughing. I love making videos. Don't get me wrong. You know, if there's going to be something that's going to push you to the limits, at least let it be something that you enjoy doing. So while I do enjoy editing the videos, there's still only so many hours in the day. 
And it's getting to that point where I'm like, bloody hell, I'm running out of time each day to, to keep my head above water in terms of my statistics on YouTube. I didn't think it would be this bloody hard in a time when everybody's watching YouTube. Oh, God, great. That's why I should be working four times harder. <laughs> well, it's just an idea. Maybe <laughs> I definitely could be wrong. Let me check out some of the other YouTubers I follow, like video gaming uh, channels, see how they're doing quickly. Yeah, a few of them have oh. hired editors. <laughs> yeah, I watch them too. A few of them are what? They're hiring editors and pumping out more videos. I, yeah, I keep a close eye on that community too, just by coming. I don't game. But I do watch speedrunning. <laughs> I don't know why. Just, just something I enjoy. But nevertheless, they're all pumping out more videos because <laughs> they know there's a massive amount more people watching currently. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Still doesn't answer why you can't find your uh, notifications and live, you know, reminders going out. We can only speculate, eh? But we know that's a fact. Yeah. But before they were going out, but now they're not going out, so. Yeah, easy come, easy go, I suppose. Is that the bugs me the most? This one moaned up to my wife. I will have a little moan. I was like, well, I've built up a very dedicated audience on both channels, especially the second channel, the one that ended up being, you know, or isn't at the moment, but for a time was the sacrificial lamb in this. You know, if there's going to be a hit, that's going to be the one. That's the one with the most dedicated audience. So you're like, it's, it is quite heartbreaking when you're like, right, you've built up this dedicated audience. On the second channel, I had 30 minute watch time, which is to say that people tuning into that channel on average stay watching for 30 minutes by youtube standards that is spectacular as an average so fantastic statistics good view uh, figures can, compared to the number of subscribers in other words a very dedicated audience so when you find out your dedicated audience has got to go to extra effort just to watch you in other words go to the channel go to your videos and then in the video tab you, if you're live you'll have a live video in it but beyond that, you won't know I'm even broadcasting. You're like, right, so even the people who are actually subscribed have to go to extra effort to watch me. Well, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Like the post office delivering everybody else's mail but yours. Seems that way. Metaphorically, yeah. But it's not like it's mail. It's not like... Well, it is like it's mail because exactly they've they've ticked a box that says yes, I want this. Like they're on a mailing list, I want it sent to me. Yeah. Well, you produce a good show. You have exciting subject uh, topics, and you have audience and panel participation, and that's why it's uh, invigorating to have these concepts and facts and ideas and. It's like you said, educational, and you're learning something each time. So you have a dedicated viewer audience. Yeah, well, as I, as I say on or did on on the live shows when it, when it was more prevalent or I was more conscious of it or at least doing something about it rather than reverting back to my old ways. Nevertheless, when that, that was the case, I was thanking everybody profusely in the audience for sharing. It's like thank you so much for sharing because. Without that, there probably wouldn't be half the people that are here. I know the audience shares the show a lot. And, you know, in spite of that, I'll still pester them to share. <laughs> it's just one of those, right? Because you want an audience. And you're like, well, like, okay, if I'm not going to get promoted in terms of my own subscription fields from my own subscribers. Then the people who have gone to the effort of going to the channel, going to the videos, checking and seeing if I'm live. Because I've got a schedule, you know, I'm always pretty much on time. Three minutes will be live and people know that so they will look well thank god because <laughs> otherwise there'd be like 20 people watching yeah well like before i had to go find you now the notifications at least on my end are popping up whereas before they weren't but I can't say that's happening everywhere. Isn't that handy? You getting notifications given that you're a panel member and all. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
I was going to show up anyway, right? <laughs> you're part of the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I am. I forgot. But, I forgot but you're getting notified. Really By the way, the show you'll be making shortly, that'll be on for, for you to watch. <laughs> 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 thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> what did I miss? So I, you didn't miss anything, Neil. Neil. How you doing, Neil? I missed. Did you say notifications? Something. Sorry. Yeah, he said he got a notification. I said, "Well, yeah, I've been." The impression I've got is that notifications are going back out again. And then when you, you're checking, you're going, well, where's the show in my subscription feeds? <laughs> it's not appearing at all. But apparently the live show does get notifications. I checked this morning. This live show has been advertised. There we are. There's a chat. You know, you've got John Watson. You've got, um, I can't see with my lights on. Oh, I've got the other chat open. Should really get those things sorted before the live Consp show starts. Conspiracy Curious, AJM, uh, Richie Gatlin. Yeah, I've got it. Well, I don't, see, I don't see the room. It's always been fine with me. I get notified all the time. Again, I don't get the. Go on. Go on. No, 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 I was just going to say, I, I get the notifications in the feed, but I don't see the one that the the reminder. I don't see that in the feed. So the scheduling, I don't see in the feed. Yeah, that's bad. So that's the thing I can see. So I can see it scheduled in my feed. Okay. So it's just the same as it was, basically. You know, there's a limited amount of notifications and even awareness to a but, subscriber that the show's going on, which is a shame. But it does appear in the feed after it goes live, and it does stay in the feed. Neil, what were you going to say quickly? Because I cut him off so many times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying I didn't. I never had a problem getting the uh, notification. There was only one day, and I don't think Nathan put a show out there. I think it was a Thursday. Yeah, mixed Welcome. bag of mixed bag of <laughs> messages and reviews and uh, people getting notified. Some people getting in their subs feed. Some people not. It's the same. It's the same exact situation as before. I flipped the schedule. Go on, go on tenth. You've got thirty seconds. Oh, I was just going to I thought you were going to start the show. I go, welcome. <laughs> Doing no, no, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I'm, I'm drinking coffee. And... Fair enough. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Chocolate Saiyan, Righteous Force, Paul Hall, Tenth Man, and a whole bunch of people in Discord, so welcome one and all. Hey, 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 good morning all. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Right, I'm hoping to rattle through housekeeping relatively quickly because I've been chunking out the Tuesday show because we did a really concise and, you know, slightly elaborated on to the point where I could get a two or three minute video for each housekeeping question. And there's only about, I think there's two left to be published. Um, so in light of that, let's hopefully rattle through housekeeping relatively quickly. Any signs of a physical earth curve edge? Not from Apache Junction. Nope. 
Good morning and no. Hey, Chocolate. Good morning. Any signs of axial rotation? Out uh, of the earth base variety. No signs, no evidence, no nothing. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? It's over there, as Arvon would say. But no evidence. It's dependent on the R value. Any evidence of the R value? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? <laughs> no R value. Any, anybody R at all? Value, out, R value of 3959 miles. Nah. Definitely not. So. Is that the one on the model? There's one in the model, for sure. But that doesn't represent reality. You have to imagine the uh, horizon in reality is some physical geometric earth curve edge. Oh, you, you have to make uh, considerations, right? Yeah, geometric considerations. That's right. Uh, yeah, how are those geometric oh. how are those geometric considerations getting on with your refracted light? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> geometric considerations. But the light's all bent. <laughs> Love it. Black Swan. <laughs> Nathan, if you just make enough observations, you can account for that. You just got to observe a lot. That's, like, that's it. Come on. Ah, that. the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. Yeah, I've got a video on that. Put your target, put your shot, uh, yeah, put your target around the shot group that best mass, mass, uh, matches your argument. Man, that was a mouthful. Moving on. Any scientific evidence of gravity? That question gets me down every day. <laughs> boom, boom. Anybody at all? There's about as much evidence of gravity as there is of uh, chemo's claims on 5G. <laughs> that, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's why the uh, <laughs> last two shows didn't reach an audience. Because we talked about 5G. <laughs> let's let's conspiratard our way through that little claim. No, let's not. Um... Where have we got to? Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Uh, not, not possible. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? On their model. Kind of in their model. In their model. We have volcanoes, Nathan. It's not all to do with the molten iron core. That was an Arwen line. Yeah, Where but how Arwen? do you explain the, the molten iron magma? Or what, how do you explain that? How do I explain it? I don't. They explain it with plate tectonics. Nothing to do with the well, molten iron core. Go. go on. How, how do you have a plate on a bar? I don't know. That's not my explanation. Chocolate Aren't plates they usually out. described as flat. Chocolate, they they <laughs> dish it out all way, every which way. Boom, boom. <laughs> oh man. Right. Last but by no means least, any evidence that you can have gas pressure without a container? Still, one of my favorite ones. Uh, Impossible. We they can't demonstrate it. And when they try, they bring gas pressure in a container to demonstrate gas pressure in a pipe with without the top, and they don't consider the pipe a container. Yeah, you, you can't apply. Well, it makes no sense to use the words gas and pressure without a con without there being a container. It just makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, it's a antecedent consequent relationship. You can't have one without the other. So you can't have gas pressure without a container. It's a necessary antecedent. The necessary uh, antecedent. That's like asking someone to go buy yep. air freshener without a container. One of the commenters on the video that was snipped out with exactly that question in the title <laughs> said, I went and got some gravity rims. <laughs> They're wicked. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need a tie. I've got gravity rims. <laughs> nice. Why not? That's a spinning mass, right? 
<laughs> Don't need a tire. Why would you need it? It's spinning around. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, down one at number two is gas pressure without a container because their model. Nah. Gone. Not a bad number two, if I do say so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good. It's, I, I think it's equal to the black swan. It's just as good an argument. You could easily put this at number one and then next week replace it with the black swan. You know, it doesn't make any difference. They're both just as good an argument. But what I was going to say was the second law of thermodynamics cannot be applied to the heliocentric model. Now, they declare this as the second law of thermodynamics does not apply to the Earth. In reality, the second law of thermodynamics cannot be applied to the heliocentric model. That's the reality. It's, an, it's a law of nature, regardless. Hey, Arwin. Hello. Hello. Oh, so when Rumpus says the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to the Earth, he should have finished it with the Earth in our model. Yeah, the, the second law of thermodynamics does not apply to the globe would be more accurate from him. I would say you can't apply this law of nature to your reified globe model. It doesn't work. Ergo, we're not living on your model. But ultimately speaking, they declare that it just doesn't apply to the Earth when reality would dictate that it's a law of nature and must apply. It just doesn't apply to their model. You know, what's interesting is the last, ever since the Black Swan, actually, it's become more prevalent. It was there before, but more prevalent, and I think you'll know what, when I say what I mean, is they're now referring how they predict based on the model more often than they did before. And so uh, to the average person I'm talking to, they think the globe is real. But when you talk to these people who are defending it against the black swan, they have to admit it's a model. The average person doesn't realize it's always been a model and still is predictive on a model and that the geometric horizon never existed. It's a Jedi mind trick. This is so obvious right now. Precisely. Any evidence that the moonlight is reflected sunlight? Anthony? Uh, <laughs> what? What is the moon again? You want me to repeat the question, Arwin? I is didn't know that was a housekeeping question these days. Today it is. Is there any oh, evidence okay. that the moonlight is reflected sunlight? Uh, no. How would that work? No. A, a, a specular how reflections can, debunk this. And how can it even reflect like light just like that when it's relatively in the way in between the Earth and the moon or and the sun? Then how it's gonna reflect like a uniform way like that, like we see? It's. Oh wait, was this about the spectrum of the light? Well, kind of. I mean, I, I like this from Anthony on account of the fact that it's one of those things that you can refer to in, with the childlike wonder that you get when you're a three-year-old and you don't you don't know anything and you haven't been poisoned yet with heliocentric nonsense. You look up at the stars, or I did this. You know, you look up at the sky and go, "Wow, isn't that amazing?" And you don't really understand it or know what it is. Well. That's the position Anthony's in when he looks at the moon and says, right, let's see what it does. You know, he's spoken to about, me about what he was doing about a month, maybe it was even longer ago, and his method. And I was like, yeah, it sounds like a good method. You know, he went through the whys and wherefores of radiated heat from the thing that was going to be used or has been used now as kind of a barrier with a hole in it. But what he's designed wouldn't radiate heat. So that was the only objection. There was another one that he discussed with me this morning about... Um, Someone suggested, that, rather, that he should do it when the moon's not there at all. You know, similar, obviously similar conditions, but just without any moon and see what result you get. Um, but other than that, I don't think he's had any really valid objections to what he's done and what he's demonstrated. So, kudos. The, the reason I like it is because, like I say, it, not only is it approaching something that debunks the assertion that we've got a reflected 
heated you know moon that's giving you reflected sunlight it, it debunks that notion not that you need it specular reflections does that anyway but it's you know it's more to the same arsenal it's no harm in having an extra grenade launcher and it also looks at an aspect of your day-to-day -day life i.e you can go out each night and look at the moon potentially depending on where it is or what phase it's in but you know what i mean you can it's it's part of your general life the moon and your understanding of it as a globe tard is is fundamentally broken by this. And something it's something that you can feel, something that you can experience. It's very tangible. So I, I like it. I think it's cool. Right. Yeah. Concerning, by the way, the uh, the infrared type of approach to see whether the moonlight is colder and all that. A way to approach it even better is wait for a good evening where it's very clear sky, but there's still like thick clouds somewhere and then wait for a moment put on the infrared view you know and wait for a moment where first the moon is basically radiating everything you see the color and then wait until the clouds go in front of it and that the cloud has to be substantial because then it has to block it for long enough to then see how every the entire temperature will change after a while of interest. you know, you know that where... would be the most direct way to see it you know where Infrared sits on the AM spectrum. Not of interest. It's just above microwaves. Sorry? Infrared, just above microwaves. Just saying. Above microwaves? Yeah. I thought microwaves were on the other spectrum. That was more above. No. Like... Lower. Lower. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. Lower than the visible spectrum. Infrared's right. just below. The visible spectrum, so it sits between microwave and visible. I've got something else that Anthony can do that I did with my laser thermometer. I actually pointed it at the moon, and it did show a different. It showed a cooler temperature by just shooting my laser thermometer at the moon. Wonder if that would do anything. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. So that's a bit of a loaded question, Paul. You want me to presuppose it's physical? No, no, no. Well, you can at least see the temperature variation. That's all I'm driving at. So that's what I'm saying. I pointed at the regular sky and it was one temperature. Then I pointed at the moon, it was a slightly cooler temperature. That's all I'm saying. It, yeah, we can see the what what would be described as an effect, though. Yeah, but what what is it that you're actually testing? If you point, I, I'm I'm not trying to. I mean, it's not a gotcha. I'm just I'm asking like as an open ended question. What is it exactly that you're looking at? Or pointing the laser right in this case. Well, the laser is a laser thermometer. Like you can point and get the temperature of a surface. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I was using to do the moon temperature test. There it is. When I pointed at the moon, it, it's it's a, it shows a cooler temperature. That's all I'm saying. Uh, when sorry, I shot my say, laser at the moon. Do you say surface before moon or after? No. no I, okay. The thermometer is a surface. It's a laser thermometer that measures the surface temperature. Of, of a surface. All I'm saying is I pointed it at the moon and it got a cooler temperature than when I pointed it at the sky. That's all I'm saying. Sure, but it's working on the premise that you're pointing it at a surface. Actually... Right, I get it. I get it. Actually, I, I get what you're saying, but it's just it's just temperature variation, that's all. No, actually, he's just pointing it at the moon, but okay. it's not... It doesn't have enough power to reach whatever distance that is. Hey, Adam. Hey. Afternoon, guys. Hey, Adam. Have you? Has somebody pop, pop, pop. You, hold on one second, tenth man. Has somebody pricked your ears, up, Adam? Yeah, he got me last night. I had to ring him in a drunken state when he posted it. Um, yeah, shout out at me. Um, wouldn't necessarily go as far as the best moonlight experiment I've ever seen, but certainly the. Uh, most uh best demonstrative uh, this I've, is, I've ever seen it's absolutely uh, yeah. brilliant anthony. for demonstrating the, the principle anthony if you're listening this is coming in the form of a shit sandwich so <laughs> <laughs> hey adam i responded to you did you get that um no i thought it was good i did spot that it got some Damn, I can't remember what he told me the problem was to make the joke work. He missed a card with hypothesis written on it, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone there. 
pointed out to me and I was like, I didn't even notice. It doesn't matter. Very, Adam, very, very, no, just very, very interesting observation. I, I look forward to seeing it. For me, it just does demonstrate that it's to sort of prove anything, but it just adds that whatever is going off, it the nature of this moonlight appears to be different. It's not, it's not appearing to exhibit the behavior of reflected sunlight. That's, It's not. It's not reflected sunlight. That, that, no, that's, exactly. that's it's, certain. It's not demonstrating that behaviour, is it? That's what this shows to me. Yeah, it's exactly. And if if someone was to challenge the argument, and come up with a reasonable objection, and from what Anthony's told me so far, they haven't. You could just revert to specular reflections. Mm. They're very pretty, Riley. Very pretty, mate. This is doing something. Hey, he's out there doing it, man. More power to you, Anthony. Me, I'm stuck in front of editing software all day. I'll be in front of sick people all day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, it's nice to come over and see that. It was, it was, it was cool. I mean, pimping on rock tacks as well. Are you, are you at work now? Put, <laughs> no, I'm off, off, mate. Thursdays, isn't it? My uh, only chance I get to come on the debates now. So. It's, Nathan, I posted a picture on our it has to do with gas pressure without a container. I mean, Master B, can you show it? This air brake? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's on screen. So when you're looking at the big buses, the diesel pushers and so forth, they use air brakes. Uh, just look at the image and see how they have to get that air. Look at all the things there. So I wonder what the baller has to say about this. It's not like the air around the bus all of a sudden magically goes through the tubes, right? <laughs> Compressor, right, so pressure. Too busy putting it on screen and uh, squaring it up to really understand what the point you were making. Can you can you make your point again? I wasn't paying it enough attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I. When you think about the big buses, they use air brakes, uh, the diesel pushers, we call them here. Uh, you could see this diagram, and it shows that a compressor is needed, and you need an air tank. And that's how you create the air pressure to go through the tubes to apply to the brakes. So, I mean, it couldn't be any easier than this image to, to show you can't have gas pressure without a container. You need it. I see. Cool. But I could just see a baller saying, oh, yeah, it's the air around the bus, and it magically stops it. <laughs> so anything on the debate that's pricked your ears of recent times, Adam? Specific subject matters, I mean. Well, I mean, other than that, I think it's just, it, it's interesting just watching them flounder, I think, more than anything. I mean, it's been noticeable is, is, is I think they're, they're wanting to get kicked, mate, isn't it? Like, right, Rumpus popping in and Brando, it's, it's almost like they've got nothing. So they'll start, like, Ball Busters on Saturday was a good example. Just nothing. So they'll start with what they know is going to get them kicked because that's all they've got now. Um. Read out a super chat. Rocky Life says, best cult... Okay, I hope you're being sarcastic. Best cult I've ever been involved in. Uh, here is some funding. Thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it, Rocky Life. Why is Sean still here? Sean who? Let's just have a quick scroll up through the chat. Oh, Sean Hawkins. At Nathan Oakley. Nobody has ever said that we can have gas pressure next to a vacuum without a container. You know this, but you straw man us anyway. <coughs> Very dishonest of you. Nobody has ever said that we can have gas pressure next to a vacuum 
without a container. You can't have that, but that's your model, you moron. No, nobody would say it. it's, it's in defiance of the second law of thermodynamics to have gas pressure next to a vacuum without a container because the gas would fill the space. That's a natural law. People talk about the natural law, but if you're saying nobody's ever said that, let me just read it once more. Nobody has ever said that we can have gas pressure next to a vacuum. But that's your that's the basis of your model. He's here because he argues, the, at least argues, albeit from a position of a complete retard, about the subject. But he's saying nobody ever says we can have gas pressure next to a vacuum. Well, while nobody might have said it, to take him literally, that is your model. We are a pressurised system. Earth has pressure, therefore pressurised. And the sky, according to the model, heliocentrism, is a vacuum. So your model says it, you complete retard. He's here to just show how stupid fundies are, I think, Racky life. He's doing a great job. Read Sean if you want to know how fundies behave and reason. His declaration is that nobody's saying the sky is a vacuum. All right, welcome to Flat Earth, Sean. Can that be said of the black swan and the geometric horizon? Isn't that what they're saying there? But their model has yeah. one? Yeah, but they, but they do that at much higher levels, which is much more amusing. So you get people like AB Science smirking and scoffing into the microphone. We don't ever see a geometric horizon. Obviously, light can refract. Oh, <laughs> really? What, when you're doing geometry? <laughs> you moron. <laughs> but yeah, they, they don't get it. They don't understand also why it's being called a black swan. Because the horizon's never going to be geometric again, it gets called a black swan. All swans are white. That's the assertion. That's the Karl Popper analogy. All swans are white. Here's a black swan. Uh, not all swans are white. All horizons are the edges of a sphere. We can calculate it with this geometric sphere edge model and tell you how much it will block things in the distance. That's what the horizon is. It's geometric. It blocks stuff. All right. What about this non-geometric, non-physical horizon that's in the distance? Well, that's non-physical, that is. Yeah, that's our argument. <laughs> that's why it's the black swan even your own are telling us how non-geometric it is even though it's required by the model clearly marked with an x labeled horizon what you're going to draw a donkey dick to it and call that geometry uh -uh. nope it's the black swan baby <laughs> so wouldn't it be better to say all swans are white here's the black swan all swans are refracted <laughs> Some of them say things like, all, all swans are still white, all horizons are still geometric, showing me a white swan you've painted. <laughs> won't change the fact that we always have geometric horizons, we just can't see them. Well, come on, Nathan, I'll, I'll be the baller since you're not on here. Because um, we know how refraction works. We can calculate where it is. We can calculate it because we know how refraction works. Come on, Nathan. You're dealing with refraction i.e. bent lines, then you're no longer doing geometry. So that is the welcome to flat earth answer that we get off all of them, Paul. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been a flat earther for a while, so I'm, I'm glad to be in the club. <laughs> yeah, there is no rebuttal to this. The rebuttal is a relinquishment of the physical certitude their model is supposed to be claiming i.e. that we're standing on a physical ball-shaped ball. ball. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what it's supposed to be showing. Look how ball-shaped the ground you're standing on is. Look, it matches. This is how much your physical geometric horizon blocks the stuff in the distance. Here's your hidden value. Hidden behind the geometric horizon. <laughs> yeah. What's that? We don't see a geometric horizon. What's this one in your model then? <laughs> Why are you saying buildings are being blocked by it then? What boat's going over then? None of the above, that's the answer. It only exists in a geometric model of a sphere Earth that we don't stand on. It's just a correlation with perspective, because they've hijacked it and called it Earth Curve. Or they did. Earth Curve is the geometric horizon and what it does, how much it blocks stuff, how much you've got hidden. That's what Earth Curve is, a geometric horizon. And now they're telling us, because it's Black Swan, we don't see a geometric horizon. <laughs> I love it. So it's the, that's why it's number one. The curve... The, the curve so we don't see the curve because it used to be called the curve <laughs> i remember that i guess they uh traded that up huh for an apparent horizon <laughs> 
Welcome to the Flat Earth, guys. Yeah, they traded their geometric claim of Earth curve for a refracted, non-geometric, non-physical, doesn't prove anything horizon. Precisely what we have, a non-physical, non-geometric horizon. Now, if they've got an X in their model called horizon, that's just geometric sphere edge, and that isn't the horizon, because we don't see it. They tell us all day about how we don't see it. Well, then it isn't a horizon. Now, if we're on a ball, we've got a geometric horizon. That's what balls give you, geometric horizons. You get people like Mr. Sensible showing you a ball and showing you how it's got a geometric horizon. And that's what you'd need if we were on a ball. Not one that only exists in a model that we never see. Because that's your claim of proof for the sphere we're standing on and its physicality. So relinquishing that geometry and physicality leaves you with a null claim. Isn't it interesting that um, in their Muppet vision, they've been getting away with murder with the side angle that no one ever sees that way. And they uh, get rid of perspective and what perspective does in the real view. But they did put an X there. And now we're using their side angle Muppet vision and say, where's that X? <laughs> Not they, sorry they ever put an X there. It doesn't make hey, any difference. Hey, uh, hey. What? I know what you're saying. You're it's saying right. in Mick West's model, it's got a marked X horizon. He could change it. He could just call it something else. But it doesn't make any difference. This is geometry. It was like back in the day when they were holding us to account because Andrew Thomas Young's being referenced or cited. Who cares? He's not the arbiter of geometry. This is basic stuff. Well, geometric considerations. He's not even saying it's real. Yeah, he's, he's so, saying it's so a thought they're experiment. They're saying that, that X is not a physical location? No, That's weird because... I remember distinctly seeing Bill Nye's little display of what the curve of the Earth is supposed to be, and his little boat was actually going over a physical edge. I remember that distinctly. Yeah, so, to, to make that, that just assertion, all of a sudden to, became non physical? Yeah, he had to make a uh, geometric uh, assertion, having made geometric considerations for a non physical location. In other words, he performed a thought experiment and then reified it and told it to his audience. So, he's describing a physical edge. But it's not. It's a reification of a thought experiment. Sorry, Brian, were you trying to get a word in there? Scuffles. Hey, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I, someone was talking to me there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, when they, when, they, when they say that we never claimed to... Uh, we never, when they say we never claimed that gas pressure uh, doesn't need a container... They're just begging the gravity question because that's what they want. Like, if you ask them, well, what's your container? They're going to say the force of gravity, the force of gravity. That's what they're going to say. You know, so by them saying, by them saying, by them saying, we never said that gas pressure needs a, a container, is them saying, indirectly saying, because gravity is forcing it to the earth. You know, that's about it. So exactly some of them have say. literally said gravity is the container. They can say what they like. So, so when they say, we never say that gas needs a container, uh, we don't care what you say about it. It's like when Rumpus came in and declared that what I say about it requiring a container was my belief. No, we've got natural law. You've got what you say gas needs in your model and what it doesn't need and redefining gas as atmosphere. You know, atmo, air, Sphere, your fundy presupposition that the Earth is round. Well, those things are just what you say and believe. We counter that with laws of nature. How gas actually behaves. That's what we use for our cowbell. Oh, you say gas doesn't need a container. Blah, blah, blah. Force that's not a force that you can think of. I don't care. We've got natural law. You're not going to trump natural law. What is atmosphere made of, again? Atmo means air. And, and what is air? Uh, gas. Oh. Okay, so gas pressure then. That that would be the same as atmospheric pressure. Since atmosphere is air, and air is gas. Right? Makes According sense to me. Show, it's weight. Weight is the container. 
<laughs> Are you away gas again? I'm just saying what, what he claims. I know, brother. In that yeah, for something example. that will... Come on, Brian. Thanks, Dan. No, I'm not saying much. Just to say, if for something to, to actually be weighed, it needs to have a linear downward force, something a gas never has. It has a pressure exerted in all directions. Thanks, Dan. The example that Chocolate put up the other day of the bromine or whatever gas that, that uh, black and white video showed as soon as he opened up the opening, it escaped or it filled the second container that was empty. Um, if gas had a weight, why didn't it stay where it was when you opened that valve? Why did it have to fill the available space? Uh, because entropy is a natural law and will apply always. It's not being overcome by some fundamentalist zealot's religious belief in a not force force that you can think of as a force that's actually the bending of pseudo Ramonian force space, a concept. And isn't rising, giving rise to any sort of force or action on anything ever. Because it's not a force. But their assertions that they don't assert they need a container. They feel that's somehow a defence to entropy. A natural law. It isn't. It's a natural law. Not a belief. Not what we say. About a model. No, it's just a natural law. It just happens to defy your fundamentalist religious belief that the sky is a vacuum. That would be a violation of that natural law which absolutely applies always. If the sky was a vacuum, the gas would fill the space. That's what gas does. Well, let's think about that, that little experiment, that little glass thing. If their logic is real or valid, then you should be able to turn the vacuum, put it towards the sky, and the, va the gas should stay in the bottom container, right? Yeah, I thought the same thing. <laughs> Yep, if that's how Kosher gravity right. would work. Gas does have weight. Uh, how do you weigh gas? You weigh it by weighing its relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass. <laughs> Sounds like it's yeah. relative density. You can't weigh gas. Yeah. You calculate the amount of gas based on the temperature and the cubic volume and its molarity, but you don't weigh it. You can give an approximation of what you suggest its mass is, but it's not a weight. It doesn't exert weight is because of the very nature of gas behavior. Is it medium dependent? Yeah. Well, the way gas is... No, it's off based on the relationship all direction. between... Um, Hold on, Adam. Sorry, go ahead, Babs. Carbon-12 atoms. Say, say the whole statement again. The atomic mass constant is based on the ratio of a carbon-12 atom. Not anymore. Uh, you might want to look into that. It's changed. It changed about 18 months ago. That's not correct. Yeah, what is, what is it now? You tell me you're making this claim. <clears throat> well, that's what the claim is currently. I, I don't know of anything different. It's out, out of date by about 18 months. Do you have carbon to go that claim? I'm not making a claim about carbon, am I? Have I mentioned carbon, anybody? Anybody? Am I making claims about carbon C12? Anybody? Anybody at all? Nope. It doesn't seem like I'm making a claim about carbon C12, my friend. No offence, Babs. I'm not going to back your claim. I don't want to get into what the new definition is. I could, but I'm not making a claim. Why would I have to do that? Well, you're... Um you're brushing off my, my claim by saying that there's another current claim that disproves what I'm, I'm saying right now. Sure. If that was the definition, surely it would be just, that's it. A bit like natural laws that apply always and are inviolable. They never change. I mean, they're natural laws. But yet this definition's definitely changed. Now, you can say, well, prove it's changed. Well, you know, people will definitely point it out if I'm wrong about this, I assure you. But if it's changing... Doesn't that make it kind of arbitrary? I'm just, just saying. Whether it's changed or not doesn't change the fact that gases have mass. Are you denying that fact? What's Define mass? mass. Oh, took the words out of my mouth. Perfect timing, QE. What's mass again? 
the amount of matter uh, in a given object. That was the, the amount. Go ahead. Yeah, the total amount of matter in a given object. The total amount of substance or matter in a given object, correct? You said that's mass? Correct. The Royal Society of Chemistry. Moreover, studies have shown that the amount of substance is often incorrectly identified with mass. And the new definition is Avogadro's number of elementary entities, not carbon-12. So you need to get up to date with the flat earth debate, you and about 20,000 other people. Right. You good? So you square it up now? The new definition is based on Avogadro's constant. Oh, God. Is that what you're saying? <sighs> the latest, it, it, yeah, go, go research it. Okay? I just gave it to you. Right. Where are you at? You in Discord? Are you in Discord? Yeah, I'm in Discord. Okay. I will give you the citations, right? I'll do half your work for you. So we can move on because you're not going to be able to recover. Okay. So don't even try. All right. If you say so. I say so. I showed so. And I'll put the citations in live stream. Give me one second. Have you heard the latest flat or globe earth proof? No. no. Uh, it's from no. MC MC Goon, the retard. So he wheels out Jesse Kozlowski's. I drug him around about four years ago. I, I don't even know where he is. I haven't heard from him. But he drug out Jesse Kozlowski's theodolite. He put one theodolite on one side of the lake and another theodolite on the other side of the lake. I, I don't know how far it was. It, it really doesn't matter. And said the earth was curved because they weren't level. Because if the earth was flat, then they'd be level. You know, you'd see right into the aperture, right? That's the new one. Have you ever heard of angular size change? Have you ever heard that before, MC Goon? No, they haven't. No, they, they've no. replaced it with what they call Earth curve inside profile. But when things drop towards the horizon, I've seen that video. It's quite old. So, yeah, he's got two lanterns, one on each side. He shows one. He's at an altitude of about three or 400 feet, something like that. And he shows that one has dropped towards the horizon. Shock horror. That's perspective. You want to know the, the real oh, yeah. scary part was none of the flat earthers had anything to say about it. They were too interested in, in talking about flat is level for two and a half hours. So just let him whistle past that. Unbelievable. I we won't I get actually, into any uh, names. Actually, we know um, who we're talking about, don't we? Go on, Brian. Was that Brian? Who was it? Was just talking. Go ahead. Yeah, it was me, Nathan. Yeah, I actually, uh, I actually approached Jesse uh, Kozbowski about this, and I told him what was going on. I said it, I, I, I actually spent four or five days of him not wanting to admit that he wasn't taking angular size change into account. This is about a year and a half ago, maybe more, maybe two years ago, whenever it was. And as well as that, that he wasn't taking center frame into account. As when something moves away from you or you move away from it, uh, what happens is that because of angular size change it drops its position in your center frame. So across the lake, his theodor theodolite was lower than his center frame in the theodolite he was looking at because of angular size change and, the uh, and he, because of distance. I've proven just on the kitchen table that you can move something that's higher than the center frame of a, of a lens. When you move it away from the lens or the lens away from it, it'll drop lower than the center frame. But it's, that's across a flat table. You know, who, el who else covered this video? When it first came out, I'm sure others covered it, but you know, somebody who covered it pretty much straight away was Jaronism. And he did his response video, and I remember absolutely bursting out laughing at a particular point in the video. Because what he did was he edited Jesse's explanation of what was happening with the lantern on the other side of the lake. And starts to say it's dropping because of... 
Now his next word in the original video was because the earth's curved, etc, etc, etc. But the way Jaron edited the video was to cut off his last word and put on a black screen in massive white letters, PERSPECTIVE! <laughs> you know, <laughs> he said it as it came up. I just remember seeing that <laughs> after thinking, what a great way of editing it to make your point really clear. You know, it's dropping because it's it's getting smaller, therefore closer to the horizon. Obviously, that's perspective, but he's calling it Earth Curve. And this was way before we got in, into angle of attack and all this sort of stuff. And I remember a year later, maybe even 18 months later, talking to Jaron and saying, well, you got this, all this angle attack stuff way before everyone else seems like, did I? I was like, yeah, yeah, I remember when you talked about Jesse Kosowski and he scratched his head and he couldn't even remember making the video. <laughs> it's really just, just weird how these things, you know, you, you recognise it in the moment, but you don't necessarily um, process how it undoes their argument. You know, you move fast forward, you know, 18 months or 12 months at the time from that point, and we were into debunking the begging the question proof and I think perspective hijacking curve calculator for its side elevation and its use of perspective to call Earth curve. But like I say, when I when I was pointing that out to Jaron, he, he couldn't even remember making the video. That gives you an idea of how old this video is. Uh, Nathan, how is that even possible to do that, the, the other light test with atmosphere? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, in terms of him drawing his straight lines. No, they're saying we can't see the geometric horizon because of the atmosphere. And if we were, uh, we would see the Earth curve right where the X is. Now he's showing the he's other up. light no, 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 with a curve. He's up. Hold on, just to nip this in the bud. No, he's up at 300 feet on both sides from memory. That's a very vague figure. Maybe it was 350, maybe it was 200. It doesn't matter. But he's not on the shore. So he's not looking at the horizon. He's looking at another lantern, another another piece of equipment on the other yeah, side. Yeah, but tense, tense point still stands. I'm going to get there. It should, it, it should be there. refracted. In this photo, he's not at 300 feet. He's on a lake. No. So, yeah. Uh, tense point, it stands because, well, wouldn't that be refracted also? Yes, I was going to get there. Correct. By their standards, everything's being refracted. Therefore, no straight lines at all. Therefore, no, none of these triangles are going to be drawn. None of these straight lines are going to be drawn to make the comparison in the first instance. So, yes, your point is still valid. You're absolutely right, Quantum Eraser. Yes, good point, 10th man. Yeah, I heard lake, but like the 300-foot one, that would be refracted too, right? All of it, always, according to them. Yeah, they forget about that. With, with their train wreck retard proofs, right? They always forget about the necessary contingent facts of the argument you just argued five seconds ago. Why? Well, because of fluoride and power lines. To name a few. Uh, don't forget 5G. No, uh, not 5G. And another one. We had another guy. That, uh, I'm keeping names to protect the guilty talking about the black swan right he's right on point talking about the horizon right but then some retard crayon muncher comes in and and gets into the crane uh refraction which goes on for 45 minutes about what a mirage is for, with the cranes on the oil platforms right you know <sighs> I, I I just don't know what to say. How many times I got to tell you guys, right? I, I don't know what to do. I, I really don't. You want me to try? I think, uh, I think when just you put your modus tollens, you just said go, every man. horizon distance. One second, 10th man. Let me just have a go. I'm going to pander to them. I haven't done this to date. What, what what you have said to date is your argument is the horizon. It's not about the bloody oil platforms. Who cares what the oil platforms do? They just show us how far the horizon is. That's their only use in our argument. Now, that's what's been said many times. So I'm just reiterating it so Quantum Race doesn't think I'm brushing past his actual point that he said at nausea. But I'm going to pander to them. So the light that's reaching us from the oil platforms is refracted, you say. They're bent lines to this oil platform and ultimately the horizon in the argument. Right, so not geometric then, no straight lines then. 
That should be your response. If, you, if you're going to get into the weeds at all about these stupid oil platforms, because they're only giving us the distance, that's their only use, then you're clarifying the argument that we've not got any geometry. So refracted, yeah, okay, so not geometric then. Jolly good. I got a new one for you. Terrestrial refraction is caused by gravity, the bending of space-time. It can do it. It can bend the space in order to make things R. Yeah, that's what they. That's actually what they claim. Really? Well, they, of they, sorts, they say yeah. that the bending of space-time, gravity, is an effect that causes terrestrial refraction, the curving around of light. Well, no, they don't directly say that, but but yeah, they've got a sat in a gravity well in the bending conceptual medium that is pseudo-Romanian length, breadth, depth, and time. And we've simultaneously got light bending around at the radius value that's being dictated by the gravitational forces that give us our sphere shaped in their bullshit origin story. Huh. Right, so, so it's only a matter of time before they connect these virtual dots. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> While it's not overtly pointed out in that connection now, I'm sure at some point someone will. <laughs> I called it. Arwin 2020. Arwin 2020. You reckon that they'll link the bending of the light in terrestrial refraction at 7 over 6 of the given radius value will be a assigned some connection with the bending of space-time. That's your prediction. Right. Well, if gravity is an effect of the bending of space-time, then who knows what else uh, the space-time may affect, you know? It is reason out that the, if gravity is strong enough, it'll bend light, you know, with black holes, blah, blah, blah. Well, by that reasoning, they could argue in some way. It probably won't really work out mathematically once you really try to do that. But they'll work out some way in how gravity do, then can, on a gra more gradual scale, bend light to make everything look perfectly flat, even though it's a globe. You know, why not? Yeah, why I've not? Heard that argument <laughs> it's a model you do it like before. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying I, I've heard certain certain people try to use that. So it's not it's not like a brand new thought. <laughs> I've heard I've heard that argument that gravity actually is bending light, causing refraction. So that's yeah. that's not new. Fair enough. There you go. I there came you up are, with it in '97 for the first time, and then forgot about it. Nothing new under the sun, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't. I don't I think they try to. Sorry, Dan. No, I was saying earlier that if you read the modus tollens the way QE wrote it, it says every horizon distance. He wasn't saying every platform. Every platform. Oh, I see. Yes, it's the the, the modus tollens argument is every distance to horizon measurement must be no more than one point two times the square root of the observer's height in the feet. Well, that's nothing to do with bloody oil platforms, now, is it? But we'd need to know the distance. Oh, how would we know the distance to the horizon in this example? Mm, let me think. Oh, we've got some oil platforms that tell us how far the horizon is. Oh, what's that? The oil platforms are on fire or the oil platforms are suddenly a different colour. It's a shit. It's nothing to do with the argument. They're just giving us the distance to horizon. That's all they're there for. And if you want to say, well, look, but they're refracted. Oh, right. So how are you going to do your geometry then? Well, if you look at Master B, I went to a site here in California. Uh, it's called the BSEE.gov. And it shows from the measurement of where they took the measurement, not exactly where BLMSB69 did his, but from where they measure, you could see that platform habitat, according to the official government record, distance to land, 7.8 miles. So how do you refract? That geometry. Don't. It's a contradiction in terms. Got Rumpus in the chat saying, well, in geometry, there's curves. Yeah, you're drawing a tangent to a curve. 
in geometry. And that's useful if you're going to presuppose that the tangent point is going to be on a curved surface that you presuppose as a spherical Earth with an R value. So yeah, we've got curves in geometry. Your presupposed curved Earth in this instance and its geometric horizon. Well, we don't have one of those. Bye-bye, globe geometry. <laughs> Welcome to flat Earth. Anyway, shout out to Cleary. He says, J. Toland Meader mentioned space-time in his video. Lol. Uh, I don't know what the reference is, but thank you very much indeed for the super chat, Cleary. Another thing they like to use as proof of, uh, of uh, the globe is visual occultation, where the person taking the observation or looking, whichever, is at the same height or lower than a foreground object. And there's a bigger background object that has shrunk in size due to ang angular size change. But because the person that's taking the observation is at the, sa the same height or lower than the foreground object, the background object seems to dip down below in the background. Now, if you have a big object and a smaller object and you put your camera lens below the smaller object that's in front of the bigger object and you can bring it down your camera lens lower, the lower you bring your camera, your camera lens, the lower the background object will appear to dip. And the higher up you bring your camera, len uh, camera lens, the higher up the background object will appear to rise. And it, it, they're just using visual occultation. I mean, Miles Davis's, well, most of Miles Davis's stuff is based on visual occultation. Yeah, and obviously a lack of understanding of sort Called foreshortening. The term is foreshortening. Yes, I already say. Yeah. yeah, all optical effects. Oh. Well, these are all optical effects that have been hijacked. So when they figured out how to hijack these optical effects perspective is the all-encompassing description of all of them. And they've just turned it on its side in a very literal way and called it Earth Curve. All effects have been accounted for in that single assertion. You know, they've worked it out very carefully, but that means that there's only one assertion from the Earth Curve calculator. Earth Curve! So all the other effects, they're, you know, just they just make it to a list of things that Flat Earthers say cause things to disappear bottom up. You're like, well, those things do cause things to disappear into the distance, bottom up, depending on how far they are, and you can account for them with optics. But the only assertion in the Earth Curve calculator is that Earth Curve's got in the way. Well, then you need Earth Curve getting in the way, because that's the single assertion the Earth Curve calculator makes. And as soon as you show a black swan image that demonstrates you haven't got a geometric, physical Earth Curve edge as a horizon, then you haven't got any geometry to make any assertions that it's a physical Earth Curve edge blocking things. Hence the model's debunked by the black swan. Well, we know now that like, we never see any of that because, as they say, everything is, re is refracted up into the horizontal all the time. So we wouldn't see any of that anyway. Where's Bev when you need him? About zeniths and 90 degree angles and horizontal. Has the actual distance between uh, Europe and America across the Atlantic Ocean ever changed, the actual distance? I, I doubt it, but they do, they do claim that the plates are moving in their rhetoric. Well, you could start at, I mean, the shortest distance from coast to coast, let's say, is, uh, I just typed it in, it's like 1,600 miles, but... From other points, it's over 2,000, I think. Uh, but given the fact that you're at a certain point on the geography to the other point, those distances haven't changed unless the continents move, right? Well, like I say, if I can dig out a, a rhetoric, one of their rhetorical maps that show a time lapse of from Pangaea to current day, then I could literally show you those continents moving in a time lapse with a bullshit timeline attached. I'm not saying that's well, true, that, but I'm just saying that's a contrary point to what you're about to make. 
But my point is that, fine, until that happens, but until that happens, uh, Catalina Island is either 26 miles off the coast of California if you come from a more southerly route or 24 miles if you come directly across from land. That hasn't changed for ages. It's in all the navigation books how far it is. Uh, it's not going to move. That's the distance. So every horizon distance at a one-foot observer height must be where it should be. I see. Well, by comparison, while they might have a rhetoric about plate movement, the the R value would be set in literal stone. So, in the same way as you, you, your ball in front of a camera is going to have a geometric horizon regardless of, you know, what you do, well, the same principle right. would always apply to a ball Earth if it was a ball. We'd have, we, would, we would have to have a geometric horizon. It, it'd be mandated by its balliness you know given to us by r right which conjured a nice image when you were saying that of a balloon fully inflated to where it's almost popping would have a bigger circumference but if it had less air it'd have a smaller circumference and if it was deflating over time it would even have a smaller circumference but the earth isn't doing that exactly the earth isn't a balloon you can't change the r value and with that, I'll say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G panels, uh, G Plus panels. If you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you are watching this live on Nathan Oakley 1980, this is where I bid you farewell. Another massive thank you to Discord and G Plus. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Da 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 da. So will this be round three of five G nonsense today? No, because the globe earthers, the globe earthers have Bill G and Sean G, so there's only two G. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stick to 2G and get them on the show. Keep it flat earth. That Is went it... on long after you were gone yesterday. Oh, I bet it did. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, God, cheers me up. So, Adam, any opinion on this? <laughs> You're such a bastard. Oh, bastion. gosh. <laughs> you broke me into your shit. Uh, but, um, I have, I have, I've seen the data. Um, I've don't know as to what's so special about 5G. I think that you can turn any receiver uh, transmitter up, can't you, and muck about with the frequencies. I think there is data. There's a lot more anecdotal stuff um, of people who work in the industry screaming against it than there is um, major stuff out there that I'm seeing being published. But I think if you do search, there's, there's bits and bobs, isn't there? Um, I've always used hands-free. I don't like sticking that stuff near my head, just as a, a, a sense. Do you know what I mean? Not necessarily backed up with anything, but um, so is it a super weapon? I, I don't think so. Um, is it good if you stick some irradiating object next to your head all the time? I don't think so. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But is there a, a grand machiavellian plan and is donald trump sticking magnets up to save us i don't think so yeah this is it's a tale of two two stories from what i can see on youtube when you do a few carefully phrased key word searches there's the there's the story for the normies which is fairly benign standard stuff and i'll get to the most recent version of that which i watched this morning but they're generally just being told what it is and what it does and how it's beneficial. And it's all very benign. Until this morning, when 
a guy basically said, oh, look, there's loads of conspiratards talking about this. I can break this down really simply. I forward, forwarded the video in Ball Busters. I was like, oh, great. All the things I've just been saying for the last two days straight from some guy who's not having to scream at somebody talking over him five times. He's just breaking it down really simplistically. And most critically in his explanation, he explains how the power levels are highly relevant and how this is lower power and how close to other frequencies that we use on a daily basis it is and in some cases are identical to other frequencies. All the points I've been trying to make over the last two days, I just didn't do quite as good a job as him because it's in debate. Nevertheless, he's parroted everything I've said and I'm like, great, wonderful, somebody else who I can just forward on. It's not me, it's just some random guy that isn't me, great. And you think, good. But then you get to the conspirator side of the subject and it's a completely different story. And what have they got to back it? Well, stuff that's being discussed in committee meetings and various other stuff. And when you really listen to it and analyse it, also benign. <laughs> but yet they're holding it up like it should be terrifying us. You're like, what the hell is going on? I would say a whole lot of fuckery is going on. That's my uh, <laughs> that's my statement. The conclusion I drew is you can't just have people like scared of the common cold or a bit of flu or getting sick. You know, that's not enough for, you know, that, that Aussie dude that was on talking about how viruses work and all that sort of stuff and apparently had hundreds of thousands of views until the video was removed and got, you know, parroted absolutely everywhere else. Well, you start to question him and his credentials and his information, and you look into it a bit further, and you find that a lot of what he's saying is actually quite valid. You go, hmm, that's quite eye-opening. So then you think, well, okay, well, that's actually lowered my fear level. <laughs> well, that's bad, because everyone needs to be terrified at the moment, as far as I can tell. That's that's the agenda, and that's what's on the, that's what's on the docket. So you've got to kind of question things even more intently when you're being told to be scared of them. Well, that's my logic. I mean, far be it for me to tell anybody they shouldn't be terrified. Heaven forbid. Well, 89,732 deaths have been confirmed, Nathan. Oh, that's nice. I don't want to get into this. We've did it with Mark and, I, you know, that, that ship has long sailed. We're already is in. that video the 5G death beams are rubbish for killing your foes? <laughs> yeah, is that what he called it? I didn't actually yeah. pay a great deal of attention to the title. <laughs> is that what he called it? That. Okay, that's a great title. In brackets, comments welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the one. Somebody oh. keeps saying hello. Who is that? I didn't hear someone saying hello, so maybe I need to refresh my Discord. Right, I'm going to leave you guys for 10 seconds. I'll be back. Adam. What's up? Your stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just have. I like me. that. That that was a really relaxed, good stuff, brother. Wow. <laughs> if you play the track down, you see, you don't have fear. And you are relaxed, chocolate. You should try it, bro. Oh, squealing. Travis. Hello. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? You can hear Travis. <laughs> yes, we can hear you. This is Marcus. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Marcus. I, I, ha I, have, uh, I have watched some um, talk from a medical doctor from MIT. Uh, his name is Andrew Kaufman. He's saying that the virus or the exosome is not a cause but an effect. Anyone can say anything about it. I'm keen to hearing something from QE, at least. Uh, hear something from me about what? Um, do you agree that virus or exosome, are they the same? And, no, I, I, uh, I, I, I haven't researched it. I have no position on it. Okay, so I just want to let you guys my know expert, that this doctor... Guys, it's out of my scope. Sorry, um, admittedly, I, I didn't do a lot on viruses. So, bacteria, I'm your man. Viruses, not so much. Cool. So, um, he's saying that he did not find any studies uh, connecting contag that contag contagion is uh, supported by any scientific uh, studies at all. 
um, he also shared the, uh, I think the title of the book is The Invisible Rainbow that talked about the Spanish flu and had some experiments wherein they uh, shared some snout directly to healthy people and it did not infect them at all. A hundred um, studies or a hundred experiments, a hundred healthy individuals did not uh, got infected by, by the flu itself. I, I, I hate to be rude. This this ship has already sailed. It's a done deal now. So yeah, I mean, while it while we could sit around and say, look, flu was always around. One day you label it Spanish flu, start counting the numbers. The next thing you know, you can claim fifty million dead. Does that mean that the numbers have been more or less, or counted or overcounted? It doesn't really make any difference. Flu was before that. Flu is after the Spanish flu. But you know, the fact that it's been accounted for as a pandemic and the numbers have been counted. Well, it's still got flu. Happens every year. Well, in this particular instance, while it's yep. not flu, okay, so it's COVID-19. Well, COVID-19's always been around. It's always been killing people if they had underlying sickness. This is, you know, that's that's the general story that four, five, six weeks ago, if everyone had that in the forefront of their mind, then we might be in a different situation now. But the ship has sailed. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I laugh about it because it's like, well... <laughs> What's this going to achieve? Yeah, um, thank you for that, Nathan. I just want to keep everybody uh, aware <clears throat> that <clears throat> the fear is just being um, uh, hyped by the mainstream media. And uh, it's a very interesting talk from uh, Dr. Andrew Kaufman. Um, I wish you guys can take a look at that. Um, all the people listening here right now, thank you so much. That's all. I, I agree. Yeah. People should definitely, but... In this regard, we are preaching to the converted. The, the, the only reason I chatted to Mark Taylor was to, for, for me to establish with what I consider to be a normie. No offence to the guy. He was actually, you know, fairly well read in this subject. Good. And he had the, the proper stats. I didn't have to argue with him about nonsense stats, which is, you know, cut through the bullshit straight away, straight to the mainstream rhetoric and what it actually is. And he had it all down pat. Kudos to Mark, you know, should have given him more praise. You know, I just talked to him on his level and was swearing and shouting at him to get the conversation going. Nevertheless, the once I'd had that conversation, I knew that the, the magic tricks worked. It's done. It's it's had its effect. It's worked. And that's that's kind of it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's it's hard to kind of explain what I'm trying to say to you without sounding like I'm just being like, oh, who cares? It's done now. Which is kind of what I am actually saying. Yeah, but we can't yeah, have the 5G in the bud because now they're trying to do it with the 5G. Morphia. That's just for us. Uh, so well, I what think you're the saying, if I could... Spanish flu was... Uh, sorry, the, the, what I'm saying is... Sorry to cut you off, guys. Um, the doctor also saying that the Spanish flu was preceded by the uh, messing up of, or doing something on the electromagnetic radio wave or something like that. So that's, I think, the same case right now with the 5G. Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's stop right there because I've had my limit of this for electromagnetic radio waves. Okay, so radio waves are light, correct? Okay. Yes, correct. It's all on the same spectrum. Light is photons, correct? Yes, correct. Um, they are neither electric nor magnetic. Okay? Thanks. Yeah, I've tried to say this on the last two shows as well. But I was, of course, I'm very, you know, het up because I've been talked over multiple occasions. So we're talking about an arbitrary assigned description that we've given to stuff. In this case, the EM spectrum. And what's that? Oh, this one's got that number and that one's got that number, all arbitrary assigned, arbitrarily assigned. You're like, okay, there's method in the numbers and how we've extrapolated them. And when you use them in those, I can never remember this word. They're, if got it, when you use them in that convention, very useful. When you work outside the convention, then it's not. Nathan, can I share something in a moment? Of course. Uh, well, I go ahead with it now. Just before you do, can I just check 10th man? Can we hear you? Yeah. Um, 
I was going to say something, and I forgot that point, but because, uh, but I did want to follow up with this. They do have the ultrasound bug repellent that they sell that you plug in to an outlet, and they supposedly put out a frequency of some kind, and they have it listed that 22-25 to 25 khz, uh, that must mean kilohertz, I guess, is dogs and cats hearing mosquitoes fleas are affected at 38 to 44 khz lizards are 52 to 60 and rats uh, which is what we deal with here mice and rats and you know rodents on the on living in the country 60 to 72 khc so if these things repel and hurt those um, animals hearings and make them uncomfortable to come near wherever they're plugged in. Um, if if they work, then maybe those emitters that the army has to do crowd dispersal works in the same way, except for humans, right? No, this is you're talking about sound. No, that's what I'm saying. Sound. Yeah, this isn't sound. Right, but that's my point. They have, they have the the. How can I put it? I haven't done the research for the army emitters, if that's uh, anything other than something like this, or is it similar to these bug repellents? No, it's a different principle. Okay, well, I'll have to look into it, because it just came to my mind to look it up. So we're, we're talking about the EM spectrum, as opposed to the audible spectrum, the electromagnetic yeah. spectrum. Sorry, Brian. No worries, Dan. How can I boil this down in a few words? The, the frequency that the new transmitters are going to use, the 5G transmitters, is very similar, if not the same, as what we currently use in the Wi-Fi transmissions and Bluetooth transmissions. So that frequency, if it was amped up, i.e. literally more ampage, more power, then could it potentially be dangerous? Yeah. You can also apply the same principle to a microwave oven. And then you've got a very small space with a thousand watts of power being pumped through it. And yet that'll do something. That'll defrost you and cook your chicken. But that's not what that's not what's going on in a Wi-Fi transmitter. It's 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 a, a millionth of the power. So you know, when they, when I've looked at the studies that have been presented by the people who are arguing for it being dangerous, I might add, I've looked through the studies, read them thoroughly, and got the uh, the actual results that they're testing for with the older signals that were considerably more powerful. So 2G, for example, much, much stronger signals, much more power to them. And they've tested rats and mice and, you know, uh, expose them to them for 18 hours a day and they get very very little change out of them it almost none and you are you this... sure nathan that the 2g is less powerful yeah what do you think they need more transmitters because it's more powerful because uh, i read something that uh, the new 5g's are going to be between 30 and 300 sorry i i read a report that um, the 5G is going to be between 30 and 300 megahertz. That's a freak. Okay. That's not the power. That's not the power? No. From what I know, they can amp, amp up the power from 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. It's the frequency. And I'm reading a report here. That's the frequency. That's the, that's not the power. Okay. No. So you can utilize the same frequency in a microwave oven with a thousand watts of power and defrost chicken with it, or you can use a micro what do they call it a milli watt, a tiny amount of power in a Wi-Fi transmitter to transmit digital frequencies on it. Well, those two things are totally different. One's using a shitload of power and a shitload of electricity to achieve a certain task with power, 
lots of it in the case of a microwave oven, very tiny amounts of it in the case of 5G, much less of it than 2G and 3G. Now, 3G works on almost the exact same principle. That's why 3G's got all the little towers everywhere. If you've got, in the UK, 3G, a, f a phone that works on 3G, you can only use it on the little micro towers. It doesn't work on the big towers. Basically a glorified Wi-Fi network. And that was what was revolutionary about it in 3G terms. Well, now they've just got it to be at a higher frequency, but with less power. Well, okay, you need more transmitters for that, for the lower power signal. But what's that? It's going to fry my brain. Well, why? It's got tiny, tiny, tiny little bits of power. Why is this suddenly going to fry my brain? Well, it won't. It's not even in the right type of spectrum to do it. But people hear electromagnetic and radiation, and suddenly they're thinking about bloody nuclear detonations and gamma radiation. It's like, these are two totally different bloody things. There's that famous... Okay, I think you're hyping it a bit. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm reading a thing here, 60 hertz, and it says uniform electromagnetic field promotes human cell proliferation by decreasing inter interlocular reactive oxygen species. So it does have an effect. 60 hertz is just a frequency. You can you can hear 60 hertz. Your mains, for example. Your, your yeah, mains, but it says it affects your mains in, in the US. Uh, bear in with the... me. Your mains in the US is about 60 hertz. Is it 60 hertz or 50 hertz? I forget. Well, you can you can hear that. You can hear it in things like transformers. You stick your head next to it. You can hear it going at a very low frequency. That's 60 hertz. That's the sound of mains. If you want to quantify this in audible frequencies, but is that the amount of power? Nope. It's just the frequency. How often? How many cycles per second? Hertz, right? I think I think the disconnect and the concern, Nathan, is, and I haven't done the full research on it because it was just the other day uh, that I got interested into doing it, but. The little I've done from just a day ago, uh, it's all over the map, so you really got to dig in. So it's good that we're having a discussion on defining what things are. But some of the other stuff is very troubling. Like we know the pharmaceutical companies got Congress to pass a law that they can never be sued. So they just pump out their drugs and it doesn't matter because they can't get sued. Well, it seems like I saw a few testimonials that the same thing happened with the telecoms they can just roll out 5g and they can't be sued so anytime someone can't be sued for something my antennas go up now why why would you disallow citizens to sue companies that roll out technology that hasn't been properly tested or vetted out i don't know so but that you, but that I no, no, know. I know. I don't know either. I'm just saying that's an alarm bell that goes off that the politicians who lie to us on a daily basis also side with telecoms and pharmas. So, again, there's something there. I can't put my finger on it, but I'm going to keep looking. But, but, but isn't that answered in your own question? Well, they're getting the rights to roll it out worldwide or nationwide or whatever wide you want to classify it in. Well, that's a pretty big privilege. What more do you well, want? We're... Can I say? Yeah, no, I no, I, on, I, I see what you're on saying, those. but what about the the protection that they have that supersedes anything that could happen to, to people and they don't ever get uh, blamed for it if they're the cause? Correct. It's just like the vaccine protection, guys. Uh, it could come down to that. conspiracy people themselves causing this. So with, 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 if you're a vaccination company, I'm not going to even get into the legitimacy of their argument. They've got a product they want to sell. It's a vaccine. So having a market for a vaccine is very beneficial. In this instance, what are we talking about? We're talking about communications. So to have a useful communications network is very useful if you're a communications company. Why would they want that? Well, would it, would it be A, because they want to sell their communications products, or B, because they want to fry our brains? No, now, B, A. Now, hold on. But. I'm just answering. Hold on. 
just answering your question. So given that they've got carte blanche to stick them up regardless, and if you stick one in front of someone's house, you can't get sued, that's quite useful if you're going to roll it out and you need it for your business. Wouldn't you agree? So they've got carte blanche to stick them up regardless if we like it or not, they can't get sued. So they're definitely well, going to get to... They're, so they're definitely going to get to roll out their technology then. Moreover, if the objection was a health objection, just for the sake of argument, and then when it was all rolled out, you categorically demonstrate there was no health concern, suddenly you've solved the problem that isn't the real problem. If the problem is that there's lots of them and they're in everyone's way, maybe that's a problem. But if you create a new problem about them being a health risk and then you demonstrate that they're not, that would be a kind of, uh, what's the word, a subversion of the real problem that they're getting to put them up wherever they like. And they are. That's what's happening. So maybe the problem we perceive isn't really a problem. Well, I would look at it another way, too, because this is I what I'm saying. There's scenario. so many layers. Hang, hang on. There's so many layers to this that the way you just said is one way. The other way is why would the government, who should represent us because they work for us, allow this uh, bill to exist that protects them from being sued and then to have uh, officials, doctors, I mean, there was uh, 240 scientists and doctors that have been fighting this for years now. I found the document and they've had uh, meetings all over the world. They're trying to get this thing studied before they roll it out, but they're being bulldozed over. All their concerns are just being uh, hand waved. Yeah, I, I saw, I saw. It's self-contradictory. Okay, okay, so, I won't, I won't so get into that finish. meeting about the scientists. Right? Well, yeah, let me finish. Please thing. don't cut him off. Ugh. Well, 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 let me finish. I'm just saying this is what causes the confusion because you can see it the way you first said it, and I totally see it that way. They're just rolling it out. It's business, blah, blah, blah. Then you see it this way. But the, the, the part that's disheartening or the part that makes my antennas go up or my curiosity to keep looking at it until I see something that I'm looking for that will make sense of the whole thing yeah, is the fact that they have protections already on something that uh, conscientious minded people are saying, can we please test it a little bit longer before you roll it out? Right, right. Okay, fine. Yeah. The people are saying, let's test the health risks of the towers. What do the towers do? They provide a tightly knit linked high speed communication network for everybody everywhere. Well, that's a lot of information. Very useful to people in government. Well, I'd want my fingers in that network. And I might even make way for the people putting the network in if I've got my fingers in it. So you're trying to widen the expanse of what, to me, seems glaringly obvious. What is it? Well, it's a communication network. Do they want to keep tabs on us? Yeah. We've all got little tick boxes so that we acknowledge something that happened 10 years ago in terms of the digital fingerprints we're all leaving. Now we're all ticking little tick boxes to say we're okay with it. It's overt because it's well, already happened. Well, this network... Well, let me give you... Uh, 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 this network is just another way of keeping communications up and running for those who want to communicate or keep tabs or gather data, useful and valuable. Well, that's what it actually is. But is anybody well, saying, hold you... on, hold on, I'm nearly there. Okay. So in the same way, when Windows 10 comes along and everyone's like, oh, right, they're watching and monitoring us. Yeah, they always were. They're just telling you now, after you've long conceded and accepted it into your lifestyle with your Alexa and your Google Dot or whatever the bloody hell you've got. Even if you can't afford a computer, you can have some cheap device that will do this. So everyone's got them and they've already accepted them. At the point that they're being told, oh, by the way, it's all being monitored. Well, this is just an elaboration of that. And a nice, new, shiny network to do it with. That's what it actually is. So what do we focus on? Well, should we focus on how our data's tracked and how really we're in a digital age that doesn't give us a great deal of freedom in that respect? Nah, let's focus on the health concerns of the towers themselves. What do they do? That's not... Oh. What's you the... missed something, Nathan. Okay, hang on. Let me let me get you, you can come in after. Very important there. Hang on, hang on. All right. Given that uh, I'm my age is sixty one, I remember going to Disneyland, Anaheim, California, and seeing the Monsanto showcase. It was beautiful. I mean, just the little city and everything. Monsanto, big company, big name back in the day. 
uh, recently was bought by Bear. Uh, uh, if you would have told me back then, and Monsanto was officially promoting themselves as this type of company, uh, what did Monsanto become? Well, genetically modified seed, Roundup with uh, bad labeling that people are suing them left and right, so bears swallowed them up uh, for many reasons. And the Canadian farmer who had farmland uh, and Monsanto uh, said, you're growing our seeds on your property. We're suing you and taking you to court. And he says, I've never bought your seeds. But the wind blew seeds from the adjoining farm onto his property and that's an interesting documentary if you ever watch it. And Monsanto went around suing farmers for illegally growing their genetically modified seeds. If you go back to the 60s and go to Disneyland, that wasn't that same company. How they portrayed themselves as feeding the world. Okay, but what's when your you point? Come now, when you come now, you see what they are. So we're looking at this uh, thing 5G like an old Monsanto right now. Yeah, okay, and I'm not saying for one second that what is currently your friendly neighborhood network provider giving you access to Facebook won't eventually become the thing that tracks you daily. I'm not saying there isn't a concern in terms of an aspect of what this network provides, but like with all of these things, they, there's, there's, it's all a magic trick, and the first part of the magic trick is the, is the distraction section. Look over here, because I'm going to do something over here. Well, that's what's happening. The, the actual, what it represents, what the network actually represents, and what it can, how it can entwine itself into your life, those are things that require general, general, genuine consideration and thought. But for the fact that they're already in place, it's just a shiny version of it, a better version, more efficient version, right? Well, those are all the things that really should be talked about. Now, are they being talked about? No, nah, of course not. What's being talked about is whether or not the bloody things will give you cancer. Can well, I make I've, a seen, I've seen the politicians speak in front of camera saying, we're going to roll this out without testing, no matter what the citizens say. I've seen that interview. That yeah. does not sit well. Yeah, you've me. seen that. I've seen that. Why is it that we've both seen the same video? About them contradicting themselves, it. saying there's no testing. Well, if there's no if there's no testing. What what are they backing their concerns with exactly? These scientists that say. No, no, not the scientists. This wasn't the scientists who said that. This was Doctors. the person pushing five G, saying it, but at the same time, overlay that with the protection of never being sued. They're creating this conspiracy themselves for us to be caught up in it. I get it. I, I know what they're doing. They want us fighting here while they're doing something else. <laughs> I get it. But there's something else is just creating. You're that both network. missing the big. Go on, go on. You've been trying to say we've been missing the picture for several minutes. Go ahead. Okay, what you said, Nathan, is correct. Why would a customer? Why would a corporation want to kill their customers? Of course, what Tenth is saying is correct. But you guys are missing the big picture. What if you can have your cake and eat it? What if you can provide your customers with the said technology that you're referring to, Nathan, but also have the capability of amping up the power and doing nefarious things to directed personnel that are against you? Did you ever consider What you're saying is an appeal to the future fallacy that they'll put massive transformers inside the lampposts and then amp up the system so it can kill us. No, no, it already exists. They can do it from 30 to 300. What, the frequency? Yes, they already have the capability to uh, play with the frequency and the frequency... And is, is higher, is higher worse? Sorry, is higher worse or is lower worse? I believe the lower is worse. Lower and, is and worse. And not only the lower, at the exact, like 60 hertz, is supposed to affect oxygen and... That's my point. Just, just a frequency, though, like mains. It doesn't mean anything. The, 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 the problem there is those words like. What do you mean it doesn't mean? Do. These kind of things. Did we go over the frequency power issue a little while ago? We did. 
Uh, why are we back here again? I don't know. I have something regarding that, but it's probably more correct. In, in the United States here, they have 4G towers, <clears throat> and they, they're only allowed to put out, I can't remember if it's like 1 or 10 watts. And so what, what I've seen that they do is they actually take and they connect a bunch of um, routers together or whatnot inside that tower to get around the FCC. Correct. Uh, and basically they up their power by um, connecting all of their, <clears throat> their systems inside there. I can't remember what they're called, so I mean, it's been a long time since I've reviewed it. But um, anybody get a bite on what I'm talking about? That's correct. Over. You're correct. That's exactly what they do. So they need more power from these towers because they're not powerful enough. Not as powerful as 2G. So what do they do to get around it? Well, they stick more of those little 10 watt transmitters on them. So you've got more of them. That's what they do. They're not, umping, they're not amping up the power to each transmitter. They're just adding more of them. Well, how do you get around that problem? Well, it'd be far more efficient and effective and work better if they had lots of local ones. So that's what they've done with the next generation of transmitters. Makes perfect sense. They're even less power, but apparently the frequency is terrifying. I think you have a point, Nathan, when you said to the other person, you think that later they might up the power. So first phase, just put out the infrastructure. And if it is nefarious, which I don't know yet, then second phase, add more power. It doesn't work So they like already that. got the infrastructure. No, 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 no. I can't just stick a microwave power supply on my fucking Wi-Fi and expect it to kill somebody. It doesn't work like that. I'm not saying I know the ins and outs about it. I'm saying that if you're going to roll something out and it's the frog in the proverbial uh, pan Let me give cooking, you an analogy. He doesn't know his, okay, no his, worries. If, if, if your little transmitter's are akin to a remote control car, yeah, and your UHF transmitter, massive, great, big, powerful thing, is equivalent to a tank, yeah, what you're suggesting is putting a tank motor inside a remote control car. No, what I'm saying is saying this, and I'll say it with this analogy. What they're doing now, it, it, it may be the preliminary steps. Later, it could become something else. For example, my example of Monsanto, they are killing farmers and small seed companies because it's very difficult to get heirloom seeds they have propagated genetically modified seeds to where you could get one crop out of it so if i buy a genetically hybrid uh, seed packet i can grow corn but i can't take the kernel from that corn and grow another corn out of it i need an heirloom corn seed now i being a, a farmer here as well as a rancher i decided to just grow heirloom seeds they are so difficult to get they, they, uh, not all varieties are even available. And Monsanto is wanting to control the food supply. So they're taking farmers out of business by suing them, by having the wind throw some of their seeds in there or a bird eats it and craps on their land. And, oh, you're growing our seed. But it was a bird who crapped on my property with your seed. I, I'm not growing your seed. But these farmers get sued and there's a whole history of this and they want to control the food supply. Now, is that the Monsanto of 1960? No. Yeah, I, heard, I heard this point last but, time. But in terms of No, I know that. What, That's what I'm saying. I don't know what the future is. So I don't know what they can do once they get the infrastructure up to make it something else, just like Monsanto didn't show who they really were till later. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I right agree. Now, it, and I agree. Yeah. You know, okay, but, good. But, but, but in terms of the comparison when it comes to people's fears... They're suddenly going to stick massive transformers inside lampposts to make these things super powerful enough to kill people. It's like, it, to me, it's just it's just a preposterous notion. It was it's preposterous to, kill, to think Nathan. that someone would it's modify to seeds to where you can't uh, grow your own uh, seeds. You, you have to get those? there eventually. Now you've made it a false equivalence. 
No, I'm just saying it was preposterous for anyone in the 60s to say Monsanto would do what they did in the 90s. Yeah, but, preposterous. Uh, yeah, but, but what are we saying that the uh, communications companies are going to do? Now, if it's utilize their product of communications for nefarious... Yeah, I'll get all behind that 10th man. Yeah, they might become the evil company of the future. The, the cybernetic organization that ends up making all of our data run the robots, for all I know. But that's going to be right up their street, given that they're dealing with technology and communications networks, as opposed to Monsanto and their seed usage. That's not the point I'm drawing. The point I'm drawing, it was ridiculous for anyone to say Monsanto would do what they did in the 90s. It's ridiculous right now to say the phone companies and telecommunication companies are doing this to kill people. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But doing this, you've just done it again. Doing this, what is the this? Is this frying people's brains with massive amplifiers inside lampposts or what they actually do? Well, I could answer that with the same Monsanto analogy. Monsanto figured a way to make more crops to feed more people. Oh, yeah, let's, let's, that, let's do it. But they didn't say they were going to sue the farmer or take his land when the bird shitted that seed on his property. Right. And, I'm sure that, and by comparison, I'm sure the telecommunications companies, no one would ever foresee that they were monetizing their data that they were using on Facebook for the sake of argument. But then when they were, it's like, who could have foreseen? Yeah, but that's not what we're being told to be concerned about now. And I'm not even saying people should concern themselves that suddenly they'll have their information weaponized. Uh, <clears throat> it's already happened. Uh, anyway, no. my, point, my yeah. point is that that's not the fear porn we're being perpetuated with in this arena currently, is it, 10th Man? It's not worry about what they might do with the network or your data that's no. going through the network. People are saying the towers well, are going to kill you and setting them on fire. No, I agree. I totally agree with. I'm I'm totally tracking with you. Trust me. So uh, they are tracking because you have more of a awake audience. They are tracking us. They have been tracking us. I'm talking of the bigger overlay of control. It's all about control. It will eventually be used to control, just like Monsanto controls the food supply. And so what I'm saying is has in a big umbrella called control. Now. It's at, the, it's at its infancy, and there's a lot of people concerned about it, including uh, people who would know this stuff, and they put out videos, whether it be the ex-Microsoft guy in Canada or the 240 scientists or the people who've been uh, bringing attention to this. I'm not talking about what's going on now. I'm talking about the overall umbrella of control. How can they use this later to control us, just like the food supply is controlled? Because most people are, are going to be dependent on these uh, genetically modified seeds. Well, that's, that's all. It's just well, a control the, issue for me. Because I know that's what those, government's uh, all about. Well, with the data, let me just answer him. With with the data itself, which is already happening. In other words, you know it, that, that will continue. But that the, everything that's being perpetuated currently is an aspect of control, also, um, and in terms of how much people are fearful of a particular aspect of a given technology. And for me, it's just. You're just me spotting another magic trick. Okay, look over here. Be scared of this for this reason. Really? Why? That reason doesn't seem legitimate. And then people come on and tell me how I should be scared of a given frequency. And then when I, when they tell me it's higher or lower, and I'm told that that's more or less scary, and I say, well, that's got so all to do with whether or not it can harm me. And they go, what do you mean? It's a higher number. Because they don't really understand what they're parroting. I, I think it's a deflection because Nathan, you have, have you seen company... those sound cannons that the military sound? We're not talking about sound. It's going to be a false analogy or gamma radiation. Yeah. Like another false analogy, even though it is actually in the um, spectrum. But you're making false comparisons. Yet yeah, there's weapons. No, but I wasn't 5G. finished. Go on, tell How? me about your sound. Maybe weapon. they can incorporate. Maybe another appeal to the future. Maybe they see. can incorporate. Maybe. Appeal to the future. Should I be shitting my pants about something they might do? Yeah, they might do it. They might come around to our house like the Sapo and drag us all away. So what, should I shit my pants because of something that might bring that to pass? No, this is just an appeal to the future. So far, nothing anyone's told me leads me to any concern whatsoever about the transmission type these towers are using. 
None. Nothing. Right. Nada. But I'm being told and yelled at and told that I'm going to lose subscribers because I'm not getting with the program. Piss off. Just give me some cowbell. <laughs> It's it, it's they already Can't spying argue with on that. us. They want to take. They're already spying on us. They want to take the the eyes off of that, and they like these other uh, conspiracies. They want us to be talking about five G as a killing machine. I understand, but the, the real problem is they are getting information from everybody. They are tracking our movements with your phones turned off. They still know. Uh, they can still chime in because they won't let you change your battery anymore because it's always in there now. So that it's always going to be powered even when it shows it's shut down. All this crap, right? So you got industries popping up, VPN, virtual private networks. You know, hey, don't, I'm here, but I'm not here. You know, do this to protect. This is what they want. I, it's all about control at the end of the day. And what they roll out now is to deflect from what they're already doing. So you're not talking about the total surveillance state. But at the end, it's all going to be control, and it's all related to control. Now, could they change it? Can they make it useful in another way that people are concerned about today? I say it's a possibility. Maybe not now, but maybe in the future. Go on, Rebel. What did you want to add? Rebel, just... I could understand your point of view, Nathan. You're sticking to your guns. You want to see proof. I was... Oh, yes, I posted something in Discord about a hearing on a communications expert. Who is it that just said that? Mailman said that. SE Montreal, you're breaking up for some reason. I can't hear you. Okay, I'm going to drop out. Senate Bill 637. It's 42 minutes long. Did you have a particular timestamp you wanted me to jump to? Anything specific? Marcus, is it? Yeah, no, no. Uh, it's not for this after show, but if you guys have a time, uh, all the people are listening right now, uh, check on that link. Thanks. One I've not seen. I don't recognize her face in the thumbnail, so I don't think I've seen that. I'll check it out. What was that, Senate Bill? It's in the Discord server. Senate Bill 637. Okay, that's all. Anybody want to add anything else? Yeah, the reason why you're all scared is because you haven't laid down a track yet. So once you lay down a track, it'll be okay. Thanks. Also, you don't have to conform with anything anybody tells you. You're, 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 you are all your own people. You know you share that thing, Nathan. You know what you like? I've kept the show open just over two hours, so a few, few more seconds won't matter. It's only a short little thing, anyway. Will yeah. I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? You still there? Hello, can you hear me? Right. Oh, hello? yeah. Are you sharing something? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, hey, uh, Nathan, before you go... Hold Before on, you go, sorry about that. Before you go, check your Skype messages for me, please. Okay. okay. Thanks. Tell me when you're ready to pop you up, Brian, and I'll stick you on. Yeah, I'm ready now. Yeah. Okay, you're on. Okay. This is just uh, coming back to that thing with Jesse Kozwalski um, earlier. This is just me moving a camera back, my camera lens, sliding it back, keeping it totally steady from um, an object that's slightly above the center frame. If you can see here, I have the center frame marked with an X and a line going through the center. And this little wooden block is slightly above my center frame. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go back with, with the uh, camera. Now, the block starts to drop closer to the center frame. And back again. It's dropping closer. And back again. It's gone below it. And back again. It's gone below it. And back again. And I'm showing there on this block here with the yellow line where the actual center frame is because I didn't have that block right against my lens. It was actually back a bit from the lens because uh, I had a thing, uh, my phone was on that was stopping it. So where the lower yellow line is, is here, that is the actual center frame. Sorry, can I say something, Nathan? No, no. 
no, sorry. Uh, the, where the lower yellow line is, that is the actual center frame. If I had, if I had the the uh, block up against the lens, uh, uh, and this is the center frame of the lens right now, I haven't moved back from the box. If I move, you know, this block here, if I uh, was up against this one and moved it back this far, then that's where my center frame frame is now, the higher yellow line. But the actual center frame would be here. So. And you Jesse through? Kozłowski moved away from his other TR light. So it's below his center frame. Yeah, it's the perfect debunking of that which we discussed earlier. Can you go through all of the frames from the start again, just because I've got you on a nice full screen now? Okay. Yeah. So there's the first one. Um, <clears throat> this block is actually slightly forward. It's not right up against the, the lens, but it doesn't matter. Um, you can see the center frame there with the yellow, with the, sorry, the uh, purple X and the purple line. I'm going to move the camera back, sliding the camera back from this block to the next one. And it drops closer to the center frame. Back again. It's almost equal to center frame. Back again. It's, it's almost dropping below it. Back again. Drop below it. Back again. Drop below it. And all the way. Perfect. So that's it. That's all of it. So it's just a demonstration of an angular size decrease. As you get the block further away, the angular size decreases, therefore it drops closer to, if it was the example with Jesse, closer to the horizon. In your case, closer to center frame. Yeah, exactly. It'll drop below the center frame as you further go away from it. So it just gets smaller and smaller into the horizon. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Okay. With that, I'm going to say another massive, huge, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making this after show possible and of course a massive thank you to you in the nathan oakley premium stream audience for hopefully smashing the super chat liking commenting sharing subscribing and all that good stuff be sure to check out nathanoakley.com and the flat earth debate forum to keep up to date with the community debate i've been nathan oakley and i'll see you all in the next video oh what a day what a lovely day